guys and girls so as i did say in my previous video that i will be doing a handbrake adjustment on this Vauxhall Corsa so all i've done is is just jacked her up obviously use axle stands and um i've just removed both rear wheels and i'm now going to show you how to remove the drum on a Vauxhall Corsa C 2000 oh Vauxhall Corsa E sorry um so these are just T30s literally just remove these two I've got the handbrake on to stop the actual drum from spinning. Might need two hands for this. Yep, yeah, oh no, not that tight. Okie dokie. Right. So, remove these two screws and uh, obviously remove the other two on the other side. And um, once I've done these, I'll be back in a second. So, once you've removed them, two little T30 screws. I've then released the handbrake, as you can see she spins now, and usually all you have to do is just give the drum a bit of a tap with a hammer. You can see there, the drum wants to come off now. So, uh, drum. Give it a little bit of a pull up and down, that pull hold here and hold here, and there we go, the drum is off. So. Um, you can sometimes adjust these through the actual stud hole, but I do like to just take the drum off anyway. Just obviously, look, there's loads of dust there. You want to give it all a brush out, clean her up. I do get some uh, sandpaper just to slightly score the shoes and deglaze the drum. And uh, and I do just, obviously, then you can check like your wheel cylinders here, check for any leaking. If these are wet, this wheel cylinder will need replacing because it will then contaminate the shoes and you'll have zero brakes on whatever one's leaking. Um, and yeah, you can just have a good inspection of the shoes, see the thicknesses, these are like loads of meat left on these, this doesn't look that thick, but trust me, that is a, a lot of life left on these rear shoes here. So um, I'm just going to go forward just to get some, a brush and clean out all the brake dust, and obviously then whatever I'm showing you on this side is a reversal on the other side, so I don't need to go back and forth between left and right, you just need to see one side of what I'm actually doing here. Okay, let's get a brush and I'll see you in a second. So all I use is literally just a dustpan brush for this. And you just simply give it all the brush down. Get all the dust out, the actual around the drum. Just give it a little, quite a bit in there actually. Just give it all the just general good brushing out. Like so. It's looking a lot better. And then, obviously I'm going to then proceed to brush the drum out, but before I do, it's always best, this is your wheel cylinder here, and then there's two little pistons, one here and one here. And it's always good just to get a screwdriver and just make sure they move. You can just, just press on the metal bit, where, we actually, where the actual shoe here is going in, just press on there, and these ones are all good. Here you can see the actual metal section and just press in or you can actually press on the shoe even. Yep, see, pull it on one side and then you see that side come out. So that shows, tells me that the actual wheel cylinder here is all in good condition and none of these pistons are getting seized up in here. If one of these doesn't move and it's very hard to push in or it isn't pushing in with the shoe like that, that means it's seized and again it will need replacing. I'm just going to now go ahead and clean out the drum. So once the drum here is all cleaned out and the, uh, all the shoes are all cleaned out free from most of the dust that accumulates in there, obviously once you've checked the wheel cylinder for any leaks and make sure the pistons move, well then all I do is just get some sandpaper and I just score up the shoes. Not sanding it all away, I literally just score the surface up here. Right, so it just slightly changes colour like that. You can see it's just lightly scored. And obviously I do both shoes and then I do the drum just to deglaze the drum. And what this does is, is that it sort of like re-beds it in again. You don't have to do this, but I find it does make the handbrake a lot, lot better. Once it re-beds in again, it's, it's almost as if it's like deglazed and it's sometimes you get like a polished surface, especially if they've been overheated or whatever but sometimes you find they get like a polished surface on here especially on the drum sometimes that can cause the handbrake efficiency to be a, 
not as good as it should be. So once they're all scored up like that, then just score up the inside inside of the drum, and uh, then I can go forward to proceed to adjust it. Now it's all cleaned up, all scored up nicely. So this is the adjuster to adjust the drum. What happens is when you wind this out, it makes this this whole section here longer, in turn pushing the shoes out. So therefore, bringing the clearance between the shoe and the drum closer together so now to get a better gauge of how close the shoes are to the drum anyway what I do I put the drum back on and then I sort of like wiggle the drum and you can get a feel of how far away the clearance is between the two I'll, uh, I'll put the drum back on and I'll try and show you what I'm on about so once the drum's slightly on here I can sort of like wiggle it and you can get more of a feel as you can see there of how far away drum is from the shoe and this doesn't look that far at all so most of the adjustment on this car to be honest with the low mileage it's got I suspected I thought most of it would be on the cable anyway but it's always nice just to I'm just going to click these up a little bit and I want to do this evenly so if I can get five clicks on this side I'll do five clicks on the other side just so I know that I'm bringing them adjusting them up at exactly the same rate because I know these drums are well balanced and I don't want to be doing like doing say ten clicks on here and five on there because then this one, well, but these shoes will be a lot closer to the drum than the other side and it could cause a balancing issue. So I'm just going to take this drum back off, but as you can see here, that's how I get a gauge of how far away the drum is from the shoe there. So here I'm going to show you how to adjust it. So here you have like a little ratcheting mechanism, you can see that a little bit down there is what clicks and clicks over and holds it there from everyone adjusting itself. So all I do is get a screwdriver, wedge it between the two and turn this wheel. Hear that clicking? That's three clicks, four clicks, five clicks. Now I'm gonna put the drum back on and see what the clearance is like between the drum and the shoes now. So I put the drum on and that feels about perfect. So all I've done there was five clicks on the wheel there. Um, if you've ever done too much and the drum's too tight to get on or you, you can hear it, you can feel it binding too much, you just lift up that metal tab and then turn the wheel in the opposite direction. So what I'm gonna do now is just gonna do five clicks on the other side, put the drums back on and then uh, just adjust the cable. This is uh, adjusting the handbrake cable. So when I do that, it's just gonna bring up the slack in the cable because naturally they always stretch. It's always best as well actually. I know this one's gonna be fine, but if you've got an older vehicle, just get someone inside to work the handbrake whilst you're watching this lever and make sure this all moves freely. That can be cause another issue, especially for brakes binding. If the handbrake cable starts to seize up, this will be staying on and therefore your handbrake will technically be on all the time. Now, before I put the drum actually back on, I'm just gonna put a very, very thin film. Like I'm gonna wire brush this up, clean this flange up, the face of this. But very thin film of just some uh, anti-seas um, just on here just to ever stop this drum actually so this part here getting stuck to this through corrosion and I'm also just going to put a little blob within the threads here you only want it very very thin amount you don't want to put like glue this on there because what happens is you can spray out and then obviously you're going to spray lubricant out onto the bloody maintenance surfaces of the of the shoes there or the maintenance surfaces of the friction section so only a very thick clean this up very very thin film put the drum back on and also stop ever them t30 screws seizing in there because when they seize on there they can you have to drill them out and it's a nightmare so the drums are back on as you say i just put some anti-seize on that screw there and just literally nipped it up because these do have a tendency to seize up sometimes or like and as you say there's only a torx bit there so if they do seize in there and you round that out it will mean having to drill that bolt out, which can be a pain. So, right, so the drums are all adjusted up nicely. Five clicks on both sides, cleaned out, roughed up, ready just for the internal side to be done, just to adjust the cable. And I'll show you that, how to do that now. So to adjust the cable, just pull this gator up, so it on clips. There you go. Hold it up and out the way there, and there is the adjuster for the cable. So you see, it's never been done before. And, oh, it looks oh, it's quite a lot on there actually, but plastic cover was put back on. So, so you try your adjuster now. 
and you can tell that this cable's loose because look it's very loose there so all I'm going to do is just wind this 10 mil in which in theory is just pulling this threaded part up which is attached to the handbrake cable and what it's doing there is just bringing up any slack within the actual handbrake and I do this with a quarter inch extension with a long deep socket you need it because there's a long thread there and I just do it up like so in little increments and then I try my handbrake so I could do with a little bit more and that feels a lot better so once that's done I then come out here and I check to make sure that these ain't on so if they're spinning freely you know you're all good and on the other side this is the handbrake off you can see that's well, that's just where the shoes are just probably off centre a little bit. To come in here before you do that is actually just pump the pedal, and what that will do, that will recenter the shoes in the drum. So, zoom back out, spinning nice and freely, and they're spinning nice and freely too. It's a perfect. So, what would happen is, which I'm telling you, why you want to do the clicks the same on both sides when you're doing the adjustment with inside the drum. It's because if I was to do 10 clicks here and five on the other side, when I come to adjusting up the cable, this, say if I pull the, the handbrake up three clicks, this would be on before the other side. And that's why you want to do them exactly the same either eye when you're doing the internal adjustment within the drum. So if I just come up one, two, three, clicks with inside now, this is on. and so's that side so that handbrake is adjusted perfectly so that's all done i've just put the gator back down oh i almost forgot i forgot to put the little nib the little rubber end on the end of this thread back on there that's that's all sorted so i put the gator back down like so and um then i'm just going to go ahead and put the rear wheels on I need two hands for this. I'm filming this on my phone, by the way. Right, before I bang both wheels on, I'm just gonna give this a nice wire brush, this surface here, and obviously on the other side, and again, just put some anti seize just on like a very thin film of this, just on the outside here, and that'll ever stop, that will stop the wheel from ever seizing on to the front of this. Most of the time it seizes on there, which, as you can see, I've just put some there anyway. Uh, this was before I put the drum on, this is the part of the flange, but let's give this a nice good clean up, a little thin coat in of anti seize like copper grease is fine, and uh, then just you know, bang the wheels back on. Right, so rear wheels are now back on. I've uh, pulled the handbrake up just four clicks. There we go, one, two, three, four. And you know when they're adjusted correctly that the wheels are fully locked on, both of them. Obviously, once that handbrake beds in properly, it'll be perfect. So that's how you know when you've fully adjusted the rear handbrake shoes on a Vauxhall Corsa. If you was to have it where you've, say, pulled, pulled the handbrake lever up four clicks and you've got one wheel locked on and the other side's free spinning, then you know there's an issue somewhere. Either the adjustment is well out or the handbrake cable seized or there's uh, something going on there. So the one that is actually spinning it needs to be investigated onto because obviously there's something well adrift there but anyway guys that is how you do a handbrake adjustment on a Vauxhall Corsa E I've probably said C a few times in this video I've used to work on a Vauxhall Corsa C's um, yeah so it's really straightforward just pull the drums off have an inspection in there make sure that the linings or the brake shoes have got a lot of meat left on them clean it out ensure that the wheel cylinders all happy and not leaking and the pistons are moving freely and um, yeah just uh, adjust it up on the actual adjuster with inside the drum and then just do the final adjustment on the cable and then that will give you a really really nice handbrake anyway guys thanks for watching and I'll uh, I'll see you in the next one